Mm. Hey, Joe, Joe, put another lump of coal on the stove. It's cold in the lobby. Why don't you wear a warmer shroud? Now, don't be so stingy. <laughs> you won't be here much longer to enjoy your money. Huh? Look who's talking about money, Joe. The undertaker told me that Stebbins was in price in a gold casket the other day. <laughs> That's a good one. Now, look here, Joe. There are nine of us, all about the same age. What do you mean, same age? I'm 81. Oh, okay, okay, Pete. But you'll all see, I'm going to outlast the rest of you old duffers. That boasting of yours is a bad business, Stebbins. Uh, Joe's right. As a matter of fact, you haven't been looking so well lately, Stebbins. Who says? Me, Tim Owen. How do I? Spinelli the Oyster Man looked just like you do right before he was took. Huh? And he was hardly 75. Now, look, Pete, if you don't stop uh, me... Uh, don't be a sorehead, Stebbins. Pete's just paying you back. Well, I can take it, Tim. But you've all been ganging up on me. Haven't you, Scott? What's fair is fair. Uh, lay off him, boys. Yeah. Scott is right, yeah. Of course, Larry. And the boys can't help it. And many a time I seen him taking an old horse from Frenchy's stable. And he says to myself, I wonder when they're going to lead Larry Stebbins away. Father, <laughs> <laughs> you'd get a big kick out of seeing me go, wouldn't you? <laughs> of course I would. <laughs> With you gone and all our wills made out to the survivor, there'd be real money in the pot. Sure, before we cut you in, the whole price for surviving weren't more than 20000 for the whole eight of us. <laughs> and now, it's millions. Uh, that's why we're ganging up on you. Larry, I, I never could figure why with all your dough, you took a hand in it. Right to win, of course, Tim. To see if I can lick the game of death the way I've licked everything else. Stebbins, you know what I think. No, what? I think you're nuts. What? Well, we'll see. Now, Tim, I ran into a bargain you could use real soon. Yeah? Yeah. A nice, cheap gray. <laughs> It was horrible, Ralph, and yet he absolutely refused to leave. Well, Diana, we might as well face it. Your stepfather hasn't been happy living with us. But why must he stay in a place like the schooner? Oh, any other surroundings are too tame for him. He's always been a vigorous person. Oh, then, oh, there's this morbid game they play. Oh, it's incredible. One night, he said he climbed into bed and found a tombstone there with his name on it. Oh, it isn't human, Ralph. It isn't human. Oh, Diana. Diana, oh, darling, take it easy. Ralph, you've got to make him move. You've just got to. All right, Diana, but how? I don't know. You just must go down there with me and speak to him. No, I'm afraid speaking won't do any good, dear. We'll have to use force. All his life, Lawrence Stevens has used force, and it's the only thing he understands. <laughs> Do you know where Mr. Stebbins is, Mr. Owens? Mm, couldn't rightly say. Uh, saw him go out early this morning. Hasn't been sitting around the stove at all today like he usually does. Oh, well, where's Mr. Hazard? Joe, he's out for a breath of air. Won't do him no good, though. What do you mean? He's bound to go anyway. <gasps> Ralph, don't listen to him. It's just that awful game. Oh, oh, here's Joe now. Hey, Joe, Larry Stebbins' daughter's looking for him. You seen him? I've come to take Mr. Stebbins home, Mr. Hazard. I'm afraid you won't be able to do that, Miss Hollister. Why? Where is he? Is this his cap, Mom? Oh, let me see it, please. Initials L.S. Abbott Brother. Yes, that's where he buys his clothes. Yes, I think it is. I thought so. Some kids out there gave it to me. Where'd they find it? Uh, they said it belonged to a guy who jumped off the end of the pier. An old man, like myself, I said. Oh. Suicide? That's what it looks like to me, mister. No, Ralph, it couldn't be. If there was one thing that Lawrence Tebbins wanted, it was to stay alive. You... You mean... I mean, if he died, there was just one reason. Murder. Here it is, Fish Market Diner. Well, let's go in, Ralph. All right. But I still don't see why you're so suspicious. What can I do for you? Did you know Lawrence Stebbins of the Schooner Hotel? Sure, I know him. Great sport, regular customer. Oh, was he in here today? Sure was. Had a big breakfast and was happy as a weasel. Next thing I knew, he kicked the bucket. What do you mean he was happy? Well, Mac, uh, he was cracking wise. He, he even did an old-time dance with his hat on his cane. Hat? You mean his cap? Oh, no, ma'am. He was wearing a hat. <laughs> If we just stand here opposite the hotel, we can watch who comes and goes without being seen in the dark. Diana, watch that door. Someone's coming now. Oh, you know him. That's Tim Owen. No, I, I can't see very well. 
We better get closer. Let's go over behind the loading platform on the next pier. All right. The light should show their faces better from there. Let's go. Made it. Look. Huh? Look where? Right behind me. Yes, there. The two of the old men. Pete Sanders and Charlie Hall. Both asleep. Yes. But they're not asleep. They're dead. Stone dead. <laughs> It was just at the site of the pier north of the hotel. As soon as we saw them, we came for you, Sergeant Boyd. Uh, you say there were two of them. Yes, you, you can see for yourself. Uh, probably just a couple of bums sleeping off a drunk. On a December night? Besides, I'm sure they were Pete Sanders and Charlie Hall. They were dead, all right. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. You're a little edgy about your stepfather's suicide, ain't you, ma'am? Oh, of course I am. Well, you could have made a mistake. You know, the police boat is still out there dragging the river. May take days to find him. Well, here we are. Now, we were standing just about here, weren't we, Diana? And the bodies... The bodies? They're gone. Oh, say, Joe, Sergeant Boyd was in here looking for Pete Sanders and Charlie Hall while you was out. Uh, what do you want him for, Scotty? Who said Stebbins' daughter thought she saw him dead? Yeah, the way she and her husband was talking, you'd think Larry Stebbins wasn't fit for the undertaker anyway. No, no, Tim, don't hold it against the young lady. She's all worked up. Well, They'll find the old man's body, she'll calm down, and we can all go to the funeral. Uh, say, Tim, yeah. you didn't happen to see Pete or Charlie this evening? No, I didn't, Scotty. But I was out a while. Maybe Sullivan did. Wake up, Sullivan. Wake up. He's been sitting here in the lobby all evening, snoozing off and on. Eh, that's a good idea, Tim. Uh, Sullivan. Sullivan. Hey, wake up. Uh, he's out like a light. Hey, I think I'll hang some crepe on him. Scare him when he comes to me. Oh, lay off that stuff for a while, Tim. It, it gives me the willies. Uh, Sullivan. Uh, Sullivan. Try shaking him, Scotty. Sullivan. Uh, wake up. Pat. Hey. Hey, don't fall over like that. Joe. Joe, he's not asleep. He's dead. Diana, let's go home. No one's gone in or out of the hotel for an hour. Ralph, I'm just as cold as you are, but I'm going to stay here. Even if it takes all night. All right, darling. Anyway, I'm convinced that you're right. The person who killed Sanders and Hall killed your stepfather, too. Only this time we came along before the bodies were disposed of. Ralph. What, Diana? Those were real bodies, weren't they? Certainly. I even noticed a small wound in one. I think it was Hall. That's exactly what I mean. If they were carried anywhere, there might be blood stains. Yes. We could trace them. They were probably taken backwards toward the river. I'll look there. I'll look over here, towards the street. All right. No. Nothing here. Ralph. What? Come here. What is it, Diana? I picked up a trail of dark red spots. Good. Yes. We'll follow them. They seem to lead right to this abandoned building next to the hotel. So they do. From the direction, I'd say they'd go straight to that side door. Oh, we'll try it. Mm-hmm. That's where they've gone. Well, try the door. Diana. It's open. Come on in. Good evening, Diana. Good evening, Ralph. I've been expecting you. Mr. Stebbins. When Lawrence Stebbins disappeared from the shabby schooner hotel at the waterfront, the police and everyone else thought he had committed suicide. However, his stepdaughter Diana and her husband, Ralph Hollister, felt that Larry Stebbins, who had fought his way up in the world, would not give up the ghost simply because he was badgered by the other old men living at the hotel. They were sure someone had begun to play the macabre game of death in earnest, especially after they found two of the old men dead. But when they opened the side door of the abandoned house next to the hotel and were greeted genially by the man whose murderer they were seeking, they didn't know what to think. Well, Diana, what's the matter? You look as if you're not glad to see me. Oh, it's not that. Father, you're not... 
We thought that you were... You, know. you gave us quite a turn, Mr. Stebbins. If we expected anything, we thought it would be your... I mean, that we wouldn't find you here quite like this. You mean you thought I was dead? Well, why not say it? Well, after all, Can't first... stand this pussyfooting about a common natural word. We all die sooner or later. Question is, who manages to hold on a little longer? Oh, please. Don't start that morbid talk again. It ain't morbid. It's natural. It's horrible. Now, now, Mr. and Mrs. Hollister, do you mind telling me what you're doing snooping around at this time of night? Well, sir, I think it's your turn to answer that question. Why, right at this moment, the police are dragging a river for your body. They are? <laughs> well, that's downright amusing. <laughs> eh, poor fellows must be cold out there. I feel to see anything funny about it. Eh, you wouldn't. Why are you here? Well, I can't like it here. Quiet. Lots of young people. Stop that nonsense. Why are you here? Here? Uh, here? Oh, yes, here. Uh, well, uh, I was locked up here. Oh, that's not true. The door was open when we came in. Well, that's true. Very true. Uh, and do you know why the door was open? No. All I know is that you're telling me a story. Uh, you're wrong, Diana. You see, the door was open to let you come in. You wanted to come in, didn't you? Yes, but I don't see what that has to you do with... You wanted to come in. I unlocked the door. Now, really, I don't see that you have any cause for complaint. Oh, look, that's beside the point. You say you were locked in here. Why? Why? Well, 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 it's this way. A fellow wanted to kidnap me. You mean that, that you're hiding here from someone? No, no. No, no, he did kidnap me. Oh, sure. And then he gave you a key so that you could get out. Uh, the funny thing about that, he doesn't know I have the key. <laughs> now, what do you think about that, Diana? Hmm. That's something, isn't it? Huh? If you've got a key, why don't you leave? No, 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 couldn't do that. Next time he came around to check up on me, he'd miss me. Uh, things just wouldn't work out right. Just who is this person? Who? Who? Uh, oh, yes, yes, who? Uh, uh, Joe Hazard. Uh, he forced me in here. Why? Mm, figure he wanted me out of the way for a little while. Uh, what do you think? I think it's all a pack of lies. What do you mean? You don't have to stay down here one minute longer and you're not going to. You're coming home with us right now. Now, wait a minute. Uh, so do you think you're bossing around? Oh, Ralph didn't mean anything, Father. It's only that this whole stupid affair has gone far enough. And I told you I wasn't going uptown with you. All right, Diana, it's no use arguing. There's only one way to handle this. Grab his other arm and get him out of here. Come on, go on, go on. Come go on. Go on. Uh, Ever since I retired, you two have been trying to run me. Well, you're not going to any longer. No one in the world can run Larry Stebbins. Hi, Lawrence Stebbins, what's come over you? Just come to my senses, that's all. I want to stay here, and nobody's going to tell me different. Now, get moving. Huh? Where to? You're going down the cellar, where you can't interfere. Turn left. Now, down those stone steps. Ralph, the bloodstains, they go this way. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Be quiet, Diana. You wouldn't want to get me in trouble, would you? Now, you. Ralph, open that closet door. <gasps> Ralph! The bodies, they're in here. Go ahead, get in there, both of you. Uh, no, Joe, and I've been sitting here all the time. I'm beginning to think the Hollisters were right. Yes, yeah, so am I, Scotty. There's some funny things going on around here, and we ought to pay them some mind. There's only five of us left. Us three, McIntyre and Everett. We'd better work fast. Where is Mac and Everett, Joe? Went to bed, Tim. I told them they better stay down here, but they laughed and said I was nuts. Didn't they, Scotty? Mac mm. said he was going upstairs to dream about my burial. Mm. I got sore as all heck. I... I can't stand that talk anymore after what's happened. Scotty, go upstairs and tell them to come down here. We ought to keep together. I'd feel safer if I knew you was all sitting here in the lobby. Uh, okay, but they'll probably yell murder when I wake them. You know what I think, Tim? Hmm. I think Stebbins' suicide was a put-up job. How do you figure that, Joe? Just got a feeling. The way the boys acted when they gave me his cap, like they was rehearsed. And then everything that's happened tonight. I tell you, I'm scared. I'm scared stiff. So am I. You fellas thought Stebbins was kidding about living longer. But he's not that kind of a guy. Look how he made his dough in the shipping business. What do you mean, Joe? Oh, like he said once, he always got what he wanted. He wouldn't stop at nothing. 
Never has. But murder, Joe, that's pretty terrible. I wouldn't put it there. Joe, Jim, Jim. What's up? Uh, uh, oh, it sounds like Scotty. Joe, Jim, I, I'm getting out of here. I'm getting out of here fast. So what's up?